Hey guys, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. We got on the shooting bench today the Brocock Bantam Sniper HR. Uh, great rifle from Brocock. Uh, this one was tuned by Ken Hicks of Southern Precision Air Weapons. If you're in for uh, a rifle like this, I definitely check Ken out. Uh, he does a great job with the tuning. Uh, this one at maximum power is tuned to hit at around 840 feet per second that's uh, in 25 caliber with uh, 25.4 grain JSB pellets 24 grain pellet so um, that's what we're working with to start uh, what we did was we shot we were indoors uh, of course we're in Wisconsin and of course it's February so we've gotten about somewhere between 18 and 24 inches of snow in the last six or eight days depending on where you're living um, so we were indoors on a short range um, and what we did was we fired three shots at each of this rifle's six power levels. So using the power adjuster, you have uh, a maximum and then five, four, three, two, and then minimum. So we started at the top, fired the three shots, adjusted, fired three, adjusted, um, we had a low shot, so we actually uh, took a fourth one, or I'm sorry, not a low shot, but a flyer took a fourth one. Then we went down to three, two, and finally low before we uh, finished up. So we'll show you the shots, the target, um, and you'll see not only what the velocity does, um, but you'll see how the pellet starts to drop off as we get down to minimum. So without any more of me yapping, uh, let's go on to the video.
velocity was measured by our lab radar, Doppler radar chronograph. Um, we only had one hiccup during the testing. Um, you'll see one result that seems way out of line, and uh, I'm not sure if it was the gun or the radar unit itself. Um, we got one surprising piece of velocity information, uh, and the surprising part uh, was that it registered high, uh, but the point of impact seemed to have dropped, and the point of impact was consistent with the next couple of pellets being fired. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Um, if you understand how radar works, it is possible that if there's any vibration of the unit, and we didn't have this vibration isolated from um, the shooting bench, it is possible that that vibration could set, uh, set a little bit of error into the system. Um, so that's one to investigate further in the future. But I think in general, uh, the results, which we'll go back and review, um, were pretty consistent with what we expected. As you can see from my scribbles, the velocity at the top two positions of the power wheel are almost identical. In fact, the number five spot is just ever so slightly higher and significantly more consistent. Dropping to the number four position shaves off 20 feet per second and you get another 40 foot per second drop going into power level three. The point of impact between four and three doesn't shift all that much. You lose about 40 more feet per second to the number two setting and then close to 70 feet per second into the minimum spot. Focusing on point of impact, the top two spots give almost no difference. The fourth and third position are about equal if you discount the flyer, and then position two drops off significantly from three, and minimum is on the way down. All of this is pretty much what you'd expect given the velocity readings we recorded on the lab radar. Although it would have been fun, we did not shoot this test off the hood of a BMW sports car. We did, however, utilize an Accutac bipod, and the Bantam is outfitted with a sweet Donny FL Tanto moderator, which does an excellent job of silencing the otherwise noisy Brocock Bantam Sniper HR. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already.